Somebody's been shot. We didn't know whether he was a victim or he was a shooter. We didn't know at the beginning, but they said uh, one of the most famous uh, athletes in Tennessee was involved in a gunshot wound. Just hope it all ends up that it was just a miss, you know, it wasn't no affair, no nothing, and he's a good man, you know. It was, it was a shock. And a play action, oh, he's got to hurry, and McNair gets away, he's at the 35, he's at the 40, the 45, the 50, the 45, he may go, he's going to score a touchdown, he's at the 15, the 10, the 5, touchdown, McNair, oh my goodness. The end for Steve Eric McNair started with what the ex-quarterback believed to be a new beginning. I think at this point in my career and, and my life, you know, uh, one door has, has, has shut and you know, uh, another door open. And that door that's open is dealing with my family, my kids, and watching them grow. And I'm having fun doing that. For nearly two years, the beloved former Tennessee Titan worked with underprivileged kids through his foundation, started a restaurant in North Nashville, and mentored rising NFL quarterbacks. But it was outside the limelight where McNair's shining reputation starts to slip. Party, drinking, extramarital affairs. These were the very activities that put Steve McNair on a collision course with a young woman named Sahil Kasimi, or Jenny as her friends called her. Kasimi was bubbly, beautiful, young, and completely starstruck that the most famous former athlete in Tennessee wanted her. The two quickly entered a relationship with trips to Vegas, family introductions, and talks of a future together if McNair divorced his wife. I don't think she actually came out and said what she wanted to happen, but it was very clear that she did want something to come about. She did want to see herself with him in the future. And it seemed, for the most part, it seemed like it was mutual between them because he seemed like he cared about her just as much as she cared about him. And he, uh, he told me I love her. And that she's gonna, that she's, he said something to the point of, she's my next wife or she's my future wife. and. He said, Emily, you're going to be at our wedding. Like, he loved her. But Kasimi wasn't McNair's only girlfriend. Since May, Leah Ignogny and McNair had been seeing each other. There were no trips, but there were plenty of late night calls to the downtown condo. And Kasimi had started to suspect McNair's infidelity. Maybe it was the confusion of the relationship or the pile of debt Kasimi had racked up with her purchases of a Cadillac Escalade with McNair. But the waitress at Dave & Buster's was starting July with looming concerns. Concerns that only worsened after the early hours of July 2nd, 2009. So one of my camp buddies called me. He said, hey, they're saying over the radio is that get pulled over for DUI. So I'm talking to him. I said, are you sure it's a stimulant that get pulled over? After a night of drinking at Corner Pub, Kasimi sped down Broadway with McNair and his friend Vint Gordon in the car. She was arrested while McNair and Gordon caught a cab back to the corner pub before involving a lawyer to bond Kasimi out of jail. I get pulled over because you were in the car. If you weren't with me, I wouldn't get pulled over. And he said, you were speeding on Broadway. And then his friend, Casper, Jasper, he confirmed and said, yeah, you were, you know, doing 60 on Broadway. That's why you get pulled over. Kasimi was dropped off at McNair's downtown condo while McNair went to visit Ignogni. And then a good friend of his named Jenny got a DUI. Mm -hmm. And I remember asking him, he said he was getting her out of jail. And I remember asking him, like, why would she call you? He said that he had connections. The stress from her DUI arrest and money woes began to seep into Kasimi's interactions with her co-workers and friends. But it's not until the following day that it overwhelms Kasimi. In her panic, Kasimi shows up at her ex-boyfriend Keith Norfleet's apartment at 6.55 a.m., but he doesn't answer the banging on the door. And that's what worries me about that day because I found out later on that that was her that was at my door. And it makes me wonder if she was coming to talk to me and I didn't open the door. Within a few hours, Kasimi is clocking into what will be her final shift at Dave & Buster's, but not before buying a gun from Adrian Gilliam in the parking lot. You get off safety and all of that once you I just, I just sold it one time. I got it and I sold it just about to take the, bullet, the, the clip out and put it in. And that was it. No one is certain what drove Kasimi to purchase this gun. Back inside, Kasimi's spiral down continues. The end of the conversation essentially was that, you know, she's just, my life is just 
shit and you should just end it. And I was just like, no. I said, you'll get through it. You'll get through it. You always get through things. And, and that was kind of where we ended the conversation. Throughout it all, Kasimi kept reaching out to McNair for reassurance and the promise of spending the night together. But McNair wasn't pulling fatherly duties. He was out drinking at Blue Moon Lagoon and Losers. I think Mac drank a beer or so in there, and he left. I mean, say we get to Losers at 1230 or something. Okay. I think he leaves, you know, I'm guessing 115 to 130 ish. What was the conversation? Uh, he wasn't long, just uh, on the way to the condo, five minutes. It would take until 12.40 p.m. before the bodies would be discovered by Wade Neely, who saw McNair's car outside and decided to stop in to chat. Neely called McNair's friend, Robert Gaddy. And as, soon as, as soon as I stepped through the door, I seen, I seen Steve laid with his head back. So, I mean, I, and I saw the blood on his pants and blood on his shoes. I didn't get close enough to see him to see what were, but I seen the two bullet holes in the walls. That's when he called 911 a full 40 minutes after the bodies had originally been discovered. So I remember that still vividly when I entered this uh, apartment and I still remember very clearly. On the left hand uh, side was a big sofa, a couch type of thing. There are two victims and uh, I can recognize one of the male vic I mean, the, the one of the victims, the male victim, right away because he was on the news, on the TV all the time, so I, I recognized his face and his uh, figure right away. So I know that, that was Stephen McNair. The story spread quickly. And then for it to be Steve. Why Steve? It's horrible, it's heartbreaking. In the coming days, the truth of McNair's demise came out while a family, a city, and the state of Mississippi all mourned the man they knew. I find myself in awe when I speak about a man like Steve McNair. I find myself in awe and honor being here to speak where it all started from. Life ain't about what people see on the outside. Life is about what comes from the inside.